To figure out the sum of the infinite series, let's consider a definite integral. From 0 to x, 1 over 1 plus t dt. We can change the integrand as 1 over 1 minus negative t dt. Apply Taylor theorem. We can expand the integrand as sigma n equals 0 to infinity negative t to the power of n dt. We know the interval of convergence of this one is from negative 1 to 1. Within the interval of convergence, we can swap the second side and the integral side. So we get sigma n equals 0 to infinity, integrand 0 to x, negative t to the power of n dt. We can take the factor negative 1 to the power of n out, so we get sigma n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the power of n times 0 to, a, to x, t to the power of n dt. Using fundamental theorem of calculus, so we get sigma n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the power of n. The antiderivative of t to the power of n is t to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1. And then evaluate x and 0. When t equals x, so we get sigma n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the power of n, and the top will be x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1. When t equals 0, the whole term is 0. Now we can write that first a few terms. So we get when n equals 0, this one equals 1, and here x to the power 1 over 1, so which is x. When n equals 1, here is negative, and here will be x to the power 1 plus 1, which is x squared over 2. Similarly, the next term will be plus x cubed over 3. The next term will be x to the power 4 over 4. Continue this way. So you see, we can express the definite integral as infinite series, right? When x equals 1, you see the right side becomes 1 minus 1 squared, which is 1 over 2, plus 1 cube, again, 1 over 3, minus x 1 to the power 4, again, 1 over 4, continue this way. So it is actually the target infinite series, right? It is convergent by the alternating series test. So this infinite series equals from 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus t dt. Now we can integrate this one. The antiderivative would be ln up to where 1 plus t and then evaluate at 1 and 0. When t equals 1, we get ln 2. When t equals 0, we get ln 1. Because ln 1 equals 0, so the final answer would be ln 2. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you.